Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Destiny and welcome back to another video in the Django React to the list application tutorial. And on this one, we're going to go ahead and start working with creating models and serializers. But if for any reason the video gets too long, then we're going to just work with creating only the models and in the next one, we're going to work with serializers. But let's see how it goes. Do make sure to drop a like, consider subscribing as it really means the world to me. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to open up my code editor just as usual. And if you are seeing this now in your terminal and you have the, the back end admin section running perfectly well, then you're on the right path. So let's continue. Now, the only thing I want you to do is open up your, your API, open this up, open up API and open up model as simple as that. So hopefully you already understand everything that's, that went on from the last tutorial and in this one we don't need to do much talk we just need to go ahead and create a model for, for to start to do so i'm just gonna run class so i'm gonna run i'm gonna create a new class and i'm gonna call this class to do all right and this class you inherit from model store model as simple as that and um hopefully you guys already know what this means this is pretty much extended from this model that was imported above here and calling the model which means we can do things like use foreign key child field and all that kind of stuff so i'm going to start with user and this is pretty much going to define the user or the owner of the to do all right so i'm going to say models the foreign key and we should pass in the user um class over here so this user class that we created at the top that's what you want to pass in here because this is the class that's storing all the users that we have in our back end all right so if you just pass this in the next thing you want to pass in is on delete and that should be equal to models dot cascade all right that's perfect and hopefully you already understand what this does but if you don't i'm going to go ahead and explain so if you pass in on delete should be models as cascade what that means is that if the user that created this to do gets deleted they want to delete all the to do's that they have created as simple as that but if for any reason you, you don't want to delete the to-dos that they have created, just pass set underscore null in here and make sure that you also pass null should be equal to true. So why are you going to pass null equal to true? Hopefully you already know that this field will be required in the to-do um, in the to-do class or in the to-do model. But if for any reason you don't want to delete the to-do after the user gets deleted, we want to tell Django, hey Django, it's cool if there is no user attached to a to-do, all right? So that's why we we'll pass null should be true. But I want to leave it as models.cascade. That should be okay for me. Now, the next thing that we're going to be needing is a title for the to-do. So I'm going to say models. Then we'll just pass in the char field. So hopefully you already know what char field does. If you want to do things like passing headers, text, um, introduction text, title, and all that, it's highly recommended that you should use char field and not text field. But if you want to do things like passing description, the content of a blog post, and all that kind of long text, then you want to use a text field. All right. So we pass in char field and I'm going to pass in max length should be equal to a thousand words, a thousand characters instead. All right. So after doing this, the next thing that we need is completed. So completed should be equal to what? Models the Boolean field. And by default, it to do should not be completed. All right. There you go. So we're using a Boolean field. This is going to be a true or false, like a check impute field. Don't worry. I'm going to show you guys how that works. And finally, we need a date, a date that this to-do was created. So I'm going to say date should be equal to models.date time field. And um, we just need to pass in auto now add should be equal to true. So what that's going to do is it's going to grab the current time that the user created the to-do. Right now it's 1.58 p.m. Monday, 26th June, 2023. So it's going to grab that time and date and it's going to append it to this to-do over here. As simple as that. All right. So after we've done that, we need to go ahead and define a string representation of this to-do. I'm just going to pass in um, define done str, and I'm also going to pass in self in there. And we need to go ahead and return self.title. Let's just return the first 30 characters in the in the title. So what this one over here, just this um, column 30 is going to do is this. So let's say that a user created a to-do, and a to-do has, has a really, really long, uh, you know, title like this we just want to return only the first 30 in the admin all right as simple as that so only the first 30 let me go back and do this again there you go only the first 30 that's what that's going to do and also return self the title is pretty much what we're going to show up over here hopefully you understand all right i think that's pretty much it let's just go ahead and finally return the profile of a user but we don't even really need that so 
I think we should pass on that for now. But let's go ahead and create a class. Let's create a class meta. And for this one, I'm going to use a verbos underscore name. So verbos name should be to do. Do you know what? I'm going to run my, my to do list first before I put a verbos name thing so you guys actually see what it does. This is pretty much what we have. Let's get to our admin section and register this to do. So I'm just going to import it over here to do. There you go. And I could just grab this other class that we've created and uh, we should call this one what's to do admin should do. There you go. To do admin and list edit table. We want to be able to edit the completed field while on the list view. All right. So we want to show the user. We want to show the title of the to do. And um, what else do we want to show? Yeah, let's show the completed and let's also, also show the date. There you go. So finally, let's go ahead and register this to do. Okay, perfect. As you can see, this to do is now registered. So we wait, wait for our server to run again. And um, there you go, it's running perfectly well. But now um, we need to go ahead and make migration and also migrate for this to actually take place. So we're gonna say Python manage .py, make migration, and they should go ahead and create this table for us. And finally, let's go ahead and push the table to our database by running Python manage .py, migrate. There you go, working perfectly well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run my server again. So whenever you mess around with your model, you simply wanna come over here to your terminal and run the make migration and migrate command. And after we've done that, let's refresh this one more time. Come over to the to-dos over here and uh, come over to add to-do. And for the user, I'm gonna say this user should be, should be desk fix and the title of the to-do should be something like buy milk. There you go. And I'm going to save and add another one. Um, this should be destiny also. I'm going to say something like Rick leaves and I'm going to go ahead and save this. So right now, hopefully you guys know that we are pretty much adding the to do's and everything from the back end. We haven't started adding it from the front end and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. All right. So right now we have our model working perfectly well. Now we need to go ahead and create a serializer. Well, I don't know if I should do that in the next tutorial. So I'd leave you guys to ponder on what we've done in this tutorial and actually understand and assimilate everything that we've done. You know what? I'm going to push it to the next tutorial. Hopefully I'm going to be able to push out one new video every two days. So you guys don't have to wait for a very long time before you get the tutorials um, uploaded. But I'm going to leave it to the next tutorial so that you guys can actually understand everything that's going on bit by bit instead of packing all the information on y'all. So that's going to be it. Do make sure to drop a like on this video. Consider subscribing as it really means the world to me. Check out my YouTube clone course. It's really going to help you understand Django and everything related to HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Django, calling off server, and, you know, doing pretty much anything that has to do with um, back-end and front-end system. Pretty much with Django, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And also, I'd highly recommend you also check out my Create Your Own Banking App Simulator course that I built using pure Django. The links will be in the description below to make sure to check them out. And yeah, that's